Greetings, subscribers! Smallville was a popular TV show which ran from 2001 through 2011 and was mainly about young Clark Kent before he becomes Superman. Over the years, the show brought on many different DC comic book characters as guests. Some of my channel's most popular videos have been about these characters. A subscriber of mine named Michael Luce Jr. left a comment suggesting I do a Superboy on Smallville video and I thought, great idea, I am going to do that. I'll go over the outlines and then my opinion shortly, but first I just want to answer one basic question. Who is Superboy? Well, DC Comics had several different characters called Superboy. One was simply Superman when he was younger, in a version of the story in which he adopted his super identity while he was still a teenager in Smallville. There was a TV show about that character, which I made a video about. Please be sure to watch that video if you haven't already. And another Superboy character is John Kent, the son of Superman. He'll be a character on the show Superman and Lois, which is scheduled to start next week, February 23rd on The CW. But the Superboy brought into Smallville is a comic character known as Connor Kent or Connell. You might have seen him in the animated series Young Justice or the current streaming show Titans. This character first appeared in a comic book in 1993, The Adventures of Superman issue 500 which was part of the story of Superman coming back to life after being killed by Doomsday. He was introduced as being built in a lab with 50% of Superman's DNA and 50% of an unknown human being's DNA. He became a superhero wearing this leather jacket and sunglasses, but after about 10 plus years, some major changes were made in this character. He got a new suit which looked toned down, but more importantly, while he always knew the other 50% of his DNA belonged to some human, he finally learned that human was none other than Lex Luthor. And although Connor remained a hero, Lex became the one villain he could no longer see as an enemy, and in some ways even secretly looked up to. Superman feared which path the Superboy would go down, and it sort of reminded me of the character of Anakin Skywalker a young teenager with powers who deep inside is a good person, but with anger and confusion just really went down the wrong path. Anyway, Superman had Connor move to the Kent farm with Martha, attend Smallville High School, in an effort to have Connor grow with the same morals which Superman was raised with. And there was a short-lived comic series called Superboy, written by Jeff Lemire, about Connor living in Smallville, which I still think is truly one of the most underrated comic books I have ever read in my life. He has a best friend named Simon Valentine, and Lex's niece Lori Luther also attended Smallville High School at the same time and became interested in Connor without realizing they were basically cousins through DNA cloning. Crypto was a part of it, there were all kind of wild adventures. It was drawn by an artist from Italy named Pierre Gallo, whose art I really liked a lot. The comic was just great stuff. Then that comic ended when DC rebooted everything with a new 52. And in all honesty, after reading just a few issues of Superboy in the New 52, I felt that Connor's story was just so different that I really wasn't interested in reading it. But anyway, let me get back to the real question. How was this character portrayed on Smallville? In Season 8's 14th episode, titled Requiem, Lex Luthor gets seriously injured in an explosion. People think he's dead, but obviously he's not. Then in Season 9's 21st episode, the season finale titled Salvation, Lex's half-sister Tess Mercer also gets seriously injured. Then in Season 10's first episode, titled Lazarus, Tess wakes up in Cadmus Labs, which in the comics is where the clone of Connor was made. Tess has no idea how she got there, and somehow her injuries have all healed. She looks around and sees different clones of Lex at different ages. She finds one walking around as a young boy going by the name Alexander. When Clark eventually comes to Cadmus to rescue Tess, she explains her theory that the real Lex is building all these clones so he can use some of their body parts to put himself back together appearing like a normal person. It kind of reminds me of the origin of Frankenstein. On season 10's fifth episode, titled Isis, we see Tess meeting with a doctor. He says he's been evaluating young Alexander and he's unusually smart for his age. The doctor wants to move Alexander to a facility where he can be under full-time examination, and Tess seems to agree to it. But then at the end, we see the doctor in Luther Mansion, where Tess says she's changed her mind. 
She wants Alexander to stay with her. She then goes into a room with Alexander and plays a mother-like role to him, reading him the book Peter Pan. In season 10's sixth episode, titled Harvest, we see that Tess is running a birthday party for Alexander. We notice that in a few weeks it's been since we've seen him, he's already aged a few years. A doctor calls Tex out of the room and says something is wrong with the way he's growing, and if he doesn't go to a facility where he can be watched full time, he'll likely die. But Tess insists he must stay with her and be treated with love, or he'll end up being a monster like Lex. Suddenly, Alexander has something like a seizure, and when they run over to him, we notice he drew a Superman symbol on his plate. Later, Tess hugs Alexander, telling him everything is okay, and he steals a key from her pocket. She shows him more Superman symbols he drew, which he found, and asks what these drawings mean. He says it's the symbol of the bad man from his dreams. He then uses the key to lock Tess in the room, and he runs away. Tess eventually finds Alexander in the barn of the Ken farm. Alexander makes references to things we saw of Lex in the barn in earlier seasons, proving that he has all Lex's memories. He then says he is Lex. At the end, the doctor says she's found the cure for Alexander, but Tess throws it into a fire, saying she wanted to save Alexander before, but now she wants to let him die in a facility because he's more than just a clone of Lex, he is Lex. In season 10's 13th episode, titled Beacon, we now see Alexander looking even older, played by actor Lucas Grabio. Many viewers will recognize the actor from High School Musical, but the intention was for you to recognize him as the same actor who played young Lex Luthor in flashbacks of earlier seasons. He's approached by Lex's father Lionel, and Lionel wants to treat him like a son. Side note, Lionel died a few seasons earlier in the show. There's a whole story about a Lionel doppelganger from a different Earth who found his way to this Earth. So that explains who he is. Anyway, Alexander attempts to kill Martha twice and also attempts to kill Clark. But then he loses trust in Lionel when he learns that on this Lionel's Earth, Lionel allowed that Earth as Lex to be murdered. Eventually, Clark is able to convince Alexander to rethink his morals and gets Alexander to believe he's his own person who does not need to be Lex. Then at the very end, Alexander tells Tess he's feeling really sick and he's losing all his memories. Tess sees what a danger Alexander can be and has to make a heartbreaking decision to inject him with cyanide. But to her shock, the needle is unable to penetrate his skin suggesting Alexander now somehow has invulnerability. The following episode, titled Scion, is set a few weeks later. Tess says that Alexander has been in a lab where he has lost all his memories, and a new discovery about Alexander has been made. Only half his genes come from Lex, the other half are from Clark, and he has Clark's powers. Alexander has now started going by the name Connor. Clark has agreed to let Connor stay on the farm. Connor initially wants to leave until he discovers that Clark has his powers and Connor is able to figure out his genes must have come from Clark. Lois visits the farm and Connor, like Clark, becomes interested in Lois. Later, Connor uses his super hearing to overhear Clark and Tess say it should be kept a secret from him that half his genes are from Lex. And with that knowledge, Connor loses all trust in Clark and runs away to the ruins of Luther Mansion. There, he meets Lionel's doppelganger. Lionel puts a red kryptonite ring on Connor, and for any viewers who don't already know, red kryptonite turns Kryptonians evil. So with the ring, Connor grabs Lois and tries to impress her with stolen fancy clothes, jewelry, and a car. He brings her to Luther Mansion where she makes it clear she does not want to be with him, and he physically hurts her. Clark shows up and fights Connor until the ring breaks. Then Lionel shows up with green kryptonite, which hurts them both. Connor uses his heat vision to destroy the green kryptonite and show that, in the end, his loyalties lie with Clark and not Lionel. For the ending scene, Clark expresses regret for not telling Connor he has Luther genes, and Connor apologizes for running away to the Luthers. Clark tells Connor he'll be his own person, and he's confident that'll be a good person. 
Connor says he wants to join the Justice League team and even shows a superhero suit. But Clark says he wants Connor to attend Smallville High School and shows him an application with the name Connor Kent. And that's how Connor's story on this show ends. It sure felt like we'd see more of him on the show, but we never did. I heard the actor was asked to appear in the series finale at the wedding scene, but the actor turned down the offer because he didn't want to fly all the way to Vancouver where the show was shot just to shoot a blink and miss appearance. Okay, so what was my opinion of Connor Kent and Smallville? First off, as someone who read comics with Connor, I'm clearly biased. And everything about this character's origin here was completely different than the comics. It was almost like the writer said, how could we tell a story as different as possible from the comics and still have this clone end up being Superboy? But in the very last scene, I really did feel like I was watching the exact same character I read about in comics. There were three different actors to play him. Personally, I thought the first one did his job in showing the confusion of his character. The second was, in all honesty, pretty forgettable. But the third one, Lucas Grabiel, was terrific. He did a good job portraying the confusion, teenage rebellion, both good and bad morals, and showing responsibility. He seemed completely different than roles I'd seen him in before, but he proved here that he's a good actor with range. And I thought the effects and action sequences we saw him in were all perfectly solid. This was the final season of Smallville, but personally, I would have been happy to see the producers do a whole season 11, focusing on Connor and Smallville as the main character, loosely based on the Jeff Lemire comics, while we just hear that Clark is Superman Metropolis without actually seeing much of him. I don't know how popular such a show would have been, and for many viewers it might have seemed too similar to earlier seasons of Smallville with an almost entirely new cast. All I'm really saying here is, I enjoyed Connor's story in this show enough so, when it was over, I wanted more. I would have been interested in seeing a whole series about him. Some viewers said it was just too big a change from the timeline of the comics to say the Connor clone is created before Clark even becomes Superman. But I say, this whole show had tons of changes from the comics, and this was just another example of that. But of course, all this is just my opinion, and as always, I'm interested in hearing some feedback from you viewers. Do you agree with my opinions? Why or why not? Were there other details of Connor's story which you feel I should have included? Or if you haven't yet seen these episodes, then obviously I recommend you do watch them, as my video is clearly no substitute for watching the real thing. And when you finally do watch, please leave your thoughts in the comments below here. Please click like for this video, and if you want to see more of my videos, then please feel free to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. I would love to have you. Thank you.